So many of you I know know their names so well. They are our hometown boys, Southern rock stars who wound up in a Southern rock tragedy. It has been 40 years since the plane crash that almost silenced Jacksonville's now legendary band, Leonard Skinnerd. This evening, the only surviving member who was still in the band, guitarist Gary Rossington, shares with us details of the crash that we've never heard before. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please give a warm welcome to Rock and Roll Hall of Fame band, Leonard Skinner. Jacksonville's own Leonard Skinner playing to a standing room only local crowd of devoted fans. Who could have foreseen a night like this 40 years ago when the relatively brief life of this band was believed to have been cut short by tragedy? If I leave These are rare home videos of Leonard Skinner at the time at the top of the Southern rock scene traveling the world playing concerts. Then, October 20th, 1977, the music stopped. The group's chartered plane crashed in a Mississippi swamp while flying to Baton Rouge to play a concert at LSU. Lead singer Ronnie Van Zant, guitarist Steve Gaines, his sister, singer Cassie Gaines, road manager Dean Kilpatrick, and the pilot and co-pilot were all killed. 20 people were badly injured including the band's two other founding members, guitarist Alan Collins and Gary Rossington. Despite having broken ribs, drummer Artemis Pyle managed to walk out of the woods and go for help. A day after the crash, I went to the scene with a Channel 4 photographer and reported what I saw. You can't even realize, seeing one of these things on television, exactly what a crash of this magnitude looks like. Up there, sitting against the tree, is a piece of an airplane wing torn away from the rest of the airplane. Lying down there at the base of the tree is the engine. And that back there, that twisted metal back there, is the fuselage of the plane, which sort of was turned around a corner. Investigators from the National Transportation Safety Board also went to the scene and ultimately concluded the plane crashed because it ran out of fuel. A few days after the crash, I spoke with one of the injured, pianist Billy Powell, when he came home to Jacksonville. What about Leonard Skinner? Will, they, will, there, will there be a Leonard Skinner after this? I don't think so. In the aftermath of the crash, no one would have disagreed with Billy Powell that Leonard Skinner was finished. But they were not. The band was reborn in the late 80s with Johnny Van Zandt taking over for his brother Ronnie as the lead singer. They have been performing ever since. Ten days ago, their tour bus rolled into St. Augustine for a concert at the amphitheater. Since the tragedy all those years ago, I've come to know the band members not as rock stars, but as everyday people we do watch you guys all the time. who still have strong ties to Jacksonville. Backstage, I sat down with Gary Rossington, who is now 65, and instantly recognizable with the long hair he's had since he was in high school and his trademark hat he wears now. He shared with me details of that terrible night that we'd never heard before. Do you have flashbacks? Do you remember the plane crashing, Gary? Yeah. I remember waking up and hearing some guys scream. It was like being in Vietnam, hearing screaming and your brother's in pain, you know, and uh, I thought that there was a door on me. I kept yelling for Dean Kilpatrick, our road manager, yeah. to uh, get this door off me, Dean, can, you know, help, and I yeah. was cussing, and, and I, I think that he came over and got it. That's what I thought, and threw it off of me. But then the doctor said that he wasn't able to do that, you know. Yeah. His, you know, he couldn't have done that physically because uh, he was too hurt, but I, he did it. Rossington still has pain in his legs, which were both broken in the crash. His arms and pelvic bone were broken too. 
the main thing was our hearts were broken because we'd lost our best friends and our band and the guys we grew up with. And still, even after four decades, the nagging questions about who lived and who did not. Ronnie was here and Dean was there and Alan was where you are and Cassie and Steve was on. So all of them died and me and Alan didn't. So that was a weird thing. You know, we wondered why didn't we go, you know, because we were right next to them. Rossington is the only surviving member of the original Leonard Skinner. Other stars, Alan Collins died in 1990, Leon Wilkerson in 2001, and Billy Powell passed away in 2009. The Street Survivors album that came out way back when, mm -hmm. and you, Gary, are the most surviving <laughs> of all the survivors. Yeah. Do you think about that? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, man, you know, because... It's like you shouldn't uh, live in there and forget your past and don't worry about your past, just go forward. Well, I, I'm glad I'm still here, you know. I want to, uh, like I say, play the music and show everybody that we're, I mean, you know, that Ronnie and Alan and our, our dream came true and we want to just keep it going. I think Billy and Leon and the guys, you know, uh, who recently have died, they did too, you know. They just wanted us to play, and uh, that's all we know to do anyway. I wouldn't know how to do anything else. But it's a, such a pleasure to play and see the people. The band will be in Tallahassee next week, followed by Lakeland and Pembroke Pines in December. They will begin to swing through Latin America and the Caribbean. As for how much longer they will continue playing, Gary Rossington said they're planning a farewell tour that they may do in a year or two. Mary, it was so much fun to watch the St. Augustine concert from backstage. I've never had that experience before. Let me tell you, the behind the scenes people, they were so professional. They made their hard work look so easy and not, not just the band's people, but also the amphitheater workers. Now, this is the playlist that they used of their songs. The mm. JVZ talk, that's Johnny Van Zant going to talk to the crowd a little bit, starting with MCA and finishing with Sweet Home, followed by an encore of Freebird. At times, they had the crowd simply in a frenzy during 90 solid minutes of music. You absolutely have to end the concert with Freebird. Yes. I mean, that is... Everybody calls for Freebird when you're at a concert. They weren't sure. disappointed either. Oh my gosh. Well, let me take you back 40 years to Mississippi, to that swamp, and seeing that crash. I mean, I know personally from covering tornadoes, the covering the wreckage and seeing the tragedy suffered by others in person. I mean, it's one of the it's probably the most difficult thing that we do in our jobs. Uh, that just must have hit you in your gut. Yes. Yes, I I have never forgotten it, Mary. To be there that day, so soon after the crash, seeing suitcases that were broken open, their personal belongings lying there, especially there's a, a teddy bear that I saw lying on the ground that just, I've just never forgotten that image. I didn't fully realize, though, I'll tell you, I was young. Mm -hmm. Not as young as they were, but close. Right. I didn't really fully realize the emotional impact that going to that crash scene had on me mm -hmm. until many years later when VH1 came to Channel 4 and interviewed me about our coverage of Leonard Skinner and about the crash for its series behind the music. While recounting what I had witnessed that day, I had to stop talking. I got so choked up um, and I was able to regain my composure. VH1 did not use that part of the interview, which was fine with me. But the thing I learned, the emotions that I felt were nothing compared to the trauma and the grief suffered by the loved ones of the six people who died and also the trauma of those who survived the plane crash, including Gary and Artemis Pyle, one of those loved ones is Judy Van Zant, Judy Van Zant, Janess, Ronnie Van Zant's widow, tomorrow at 5 o'clock, surrounded by her daughter Melody and two grandchildren. Judy will share with us her memories, both the painful ones and the happy ones. And speaking of memories, I also want to thank Judy for the use of the home videos you just saw of the band in my story, which are from Freebird the movie. If you go to news4jacks.com right now, you can find more of my interview with Gary Rossington. There's also a slideshow of the band from now and from then. You can read the NTSB report on the crash, and you can watch the special Leonard Skinner report that Channel 4 and I put together 
back in 1977, 40 years ago. Again, that's all on news4jacks.com. And if you're a fan, you truly will enjoy that. But even if you weren't even a fan of the band, you will be after seeing that tribute. It's beautifully done. Thank you.